Okay, the question is, is that discernment question of kind of the difference between the voice of, for fear and the voice for love. Um, initially, I used, um, I used feelings. I remember one time I was working through the Course and Jesus said, you know, the one right use of judgment is how do you feel? And I thought, hmm, I, I need to pay very close attention to that. Because when I looked at the life of David, I said, David's into intellectualism, into denial, repression, and though David feels some things, David has spent an entire life at not feeling. And now the Course is saying, you know, the one right use of judgment is how do you feel? So the first problem was, okay, very good, but I don't feel. I wish I could feel more intensely and more subtly and more, be more sensitized to those feelings. Because that's a, like a, a barometer, or like a little touchstone of getting at what's underneath. So, um, I started going through a process of, again, with the preferences, it was like saying to Jesus, how, how am I going to feel now that I've spent decades at not feeling? And Jesus just said, well, we're going to use some of those things that you love the most about this world. Music. So, I was taken by Jesus to get all this, to go to the library, go to different shops, get this music. And the emotions would just start to well up in me. Tears would start to come, and I would listen to certain music. And then after that long phase of working with the music, um, also, my dog Chipper, when I was younger, uh, was like an unconditional loving symbol. I could pour out all the emotions. So I think I saved thousands of years uh, working with this dog that would lick my tears. Uh, when the tears would come out, it would just be this little pink tongue licking them and licking them. That was another huge way of getting in touch with emotions. And then the movies, I would have Jesus take me to the movies. Not the movies that David would pick. These were far from it. Uh, I mean, I remember being guided to blockbuster videos sometimes, and I would just say, okay, I'm here only to be truly helpful, I'm here to heal. Guide me to the movie that would be best for me. And I would go and get the movie. Ah, you've got to be kidding. I am not going to watch this violent movie, or I am not going to watch this sad, depressing movie. No, I'm not going to watch another war story. I've had enough of these war stories. You know, the persona of David had very strong preferences in terms of movies, as well as music. And the guidance came in was a way of washing away and bringing up those emotions, so that I could start to feel. And I remember, the other thing about David is, not only was David shy, but this shyness carried over into relationships. David didn't go on his first date until he was 27 years old. That's a bit extreme. Uh, <laughs> but there again, that was David. So, I remember when I came across the Course, and was working with the Course, and, and was in a relationship at 28 years old, uh, basically what I found was that there was these intense emotions that had been pushed down out of awareness that were coming up now in the context of the relationship. Very intense. I had graduate school and this relationship and a teaching assistantship going on at the same time. And the combination of those three was like brought up an enormous amount of, of emotions. And then, I would say that those were a key block in being able to discern the spirit versus the ego. That repression and denial was like, it just buffered me from being able to really tell the difference. I wasn't sensitized enough. So, that process 
at some point I remember saying, I can't see how people even function in this world with, with emotions this intense. They felt debilitating. They felt like, I felt like I was completely dysfunctional as a human being with the intensity. I felt like I, I allowed myself to feel and then turned on a waterfall of tears. And I thought, oh my God, I'm not going to be able to turn this waterfall off. What have I... I've un unleashed this crying man, and after all those years of being the stoic man that doesn't cry, the boy that doesn't cry, I've turned on this giant waterfall. And then, that all turned out to be really important, because I became much more sensitized to my feelings, and when I wasn't in alignment with the thought systems. So then when I was working with the Course, I also would hear things like from Jesus, the Holy Spirit never commands and never demands. And I started to realize that there was a voice in my mind that was doing a lot of commanding and a lot of demanding. It was quite stern. It was quite serious. Actually it was pushy. Uh, very pushy. And, and I started to really feel like this is not the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit never commands, never demands. Almost like these gentle suggestions. Gentle. Like offering a plate of suggestions to me every day. The Spirit was very soft. And that started my journey of starting to know the difference. Because the ego is quite clever and it does disguise itself. And it can even use affirmations and it can even quote the Course. Uh, you know, it quotes scripture, and if it had a face, it would be smiling and kind of snickering, like, oh, this works every time. Uh, I get them with uh, the affirmations and the vanity of thinking that they're a spiritual person for holding on to these spiritual affirmations. It really was another trick. So, it's taken, I would say, a lot of fine-tuning over the years, but it started off with me starting to really allow myself to feel. Because without that, I don't think uh, the discernment could have unfolded at the speed in which it did. It does remind me when I go down to South America, because a lot of the women down there are so open-hearted, they just, they're just, you could feel their hearts immediately, and they pour out everything. And then they seem to have a lot of partners and husbands that are really like the macho. It's very like the bravado thing. And that kind of macho bravado thing and trying to, to stuff feelings down is, is one of the best ways at, at blocking your spiritual awakening. Uh, it just shuts it off. You know, it's just really, it's almost like a divisive thing. It keeps the unconscious mind buried. And, uh, that's, that is one of those questions that you could, we could spend <laughs> easily the rest of, uh, of the week just, and we probably will, with Gary's sessions and my sessions, there will be little pointers that will come in uh, for increasing that discernment.